Let me take you back to 1967. Uh, a 15-year-old Texas boy sniffed some glue, loaded a rifle, walked into his parents' living room, shot his father twice in the chest, walked to the next room, shot his sister in the face, and then as she awoke to the gunshots that killed her family, that 15-year-old put the final fatal bullet in his mother's head. James Wolcott admitted he planned the killings the week before. He was found not guilty by reason of insanity. And so he spent some time in a psychiatric hospital, was then released. Today, that 15-year-old boy who killed his family is a professor at Millican University in Decatur, Illinois. He is teaching, of all things, psychology. He has changed his name, but his true identity revealed after this two-year investigation by the Georgetown Advocate newspaper. So joining me now, Anne-Marie Gardner, senior writer at the Georgetown Advocate in Texas. Uh, Anne-Marie, congratulations on the piece. It was, I mean, it's incredible that you uncovered all that you did, right? <laughs> Thank so you, bro. let me just begin with, here you are, <laughs> you know about this man's past, and you are sitting across the table mm -hmm. from him and said, I know your other name. What did he say? He didn't say much. He didn't really want to talk about his past. A lot of his responses were that he, he, didn't, he didn't want to think about it. He didn't want to go there. It was a long time ago. Uh, when I asked him about the name change, he said he just didn't want to deal with it. It, it was something he didn't want to think about. So, uh, you know, I can't presume what his reasons actually were. Yeah. Uh, however, what he did say was that, it, you know, I just don't want to deal with that. So I guess changing his name was a way of moving on. So back to 1967, you know, he confessed that night. You mm -hmm. know, you quoted your piece. This he talks to this Texas Ranger, asked him, did you kill your parents, son? With only a brief hesitation mm -hmm. and aside, James replied, yes, sir. So at the time, then he was 16, mm -hmm. you know, determined competent to stand trial. Defense attorney takes him on. What did doctors say, though, about his mental state? The doctors at the time, they all evaluated him over a period of about two months. Most of them agreed that he was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. Hmm. And some of them actually indicated that the glue sniffing could have triggered a, a delusional episode. Uh, James did mention in some of the court documents that he was suffering from delusions of persecution. And as the article mentions, that he believed that his family was out to get him and he felt like it was a self-defense move. So, as we mentioned, he, you know, ultimately this goes to trial. He goes to uh, th this hospital mm -hmm. deemed sane. Connect the dots for me, Anne-Marie. I mean, how does he go from being this mental patient and killing his family to <laughs> being a pretty well-respected uh, psychology chair of a department? Sure. When he was at Rusk, Rusk had a partnership program with Stephen F. Austin University in, in Texas. And we presume that he took some courses because he was released in 1974. In 1976, he received a bachelor's degree as James Walcott. Uh, we found that he received a master's degree as James St. James in 1980 in psychology. Um, and that was also at a Texas university. Uh, it was at that point that he, when he decided to take on a doctoral uh, program, he went to the University of Illinois at Champaign because uh, he told me that that was one of the top half dozen colleges in the world for the kind of program that he wanted to be involved with. So he continued his coursework there and he did very well. He began student teaching at Millican in 1986 and uh, has been teaching there ever since. Let he me, got his doctorate in 1988. Let me jump in and just Go read ahead. Millican's uh, statement because they're standing mm -hmm. by. And Millican University has only recently been yes, made aware of Dr. St. James' past given the traumatic experiences of his childhood. Dr. St. James' efforts to rebuild his life and obtain a successful professional career have been remarkable. The university expects Dr. St. James to teach at Millican this fall. In 30 seconds, Anne-Marie, tell me what the mayor of this town is saying. <laughs> The mayor of the town says that for the good of the school and, and the, the town especially because it is a small town that seems to be focused on the school activities, the mayor asked him to resign just for the betterment of the town or just to, because he's a, an honorable man and he believes that's what he should do. Anne-Marie Gardner, Georgetown advocate, thank you so much. <laughs> what a story you have uncovered. Thank you.